Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, my class, Plastic Analysis and Design. My name is Thai Dukien, and I'm a professor of the Department of Civil and Environment and Engineering of Sichuan University. You are very welcome to my. Now, I want to um, talk about the materials that we use in this class. So, the main book that we use for this class is uh, this book okay the title is uh, plastic design and second order analysis of steel frames i recommend that you need to have this book because uh, it is very important all the content of this class is in this book and also every week i will provide uh, the homework and you have to find homework in this book, okay? Many homework in this book. And um, you can con you can share each other, you can share. So one, two uh, guy can share a uh, book, but you, if you have your uh, own book, and it will be better for you. And uh, there are uh, seven lecturers that uh, can be downloaded in this website okay you can visit this website and download the lecture now i'm going to talk about the class first is objective of this class the objective of this class is um, to present the basic concept and methods of analysis of plastic theory and so how to use the theory in the practical frame analysis and design moreover the effect of action load and shear force on the plastic moment capacity frame member and local instability and the significance of connection detailing in plastic design will be included. This is the uh, structure of this class. This class uh, includes uh, eight chapters. From chapter one to chapter six, a simple hand calculation will be discussed. More detail in chapter one, the basic concept will be discussed. And chapter two focus on the plastic hinge, and the tool used in plastic analysis and design will be discussed in chapter three. And equilibrium methods will be discussed in chapter four. In chapter five, the work method will be present, and in chapter six, as estimate of deflection we'll be talking about. Mm, chapter seven is first order analysis. And finally, chapter eight is second order analysis. So mm, we have six um, chapter regarding the hand calculation and two chapter, uh, two last chapters, chapter seven and chapter eight will be, uh, you know, the computation development okay so now we start chapter one basic concept firstly um, i'm going to talk about the materials behavior so in the first uh, week this week uh, I will provide three um, video corresponding to uh, three part of the of chapter one basic concept uh, and uh, this is first part okay so in this video I will talk about stress strain relationship of the materials and the second is elastic and uh, plastic behavior of the material 
And the third one is ductility of the material. And the fourth one is idealized curve, which will be used in plastic analysis and design. And uh, at, the, at the end of this class, I will uh, provide a homework, very simple homework for you to uh, practice calculation. Okay. Stress strain relationship. Have you ever seen uh, this machine? I believe you already know this machine, okay? So this machine is normally used for tensile test. It is a um, uh, 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 specimen, maybe a steel specimen, tensile test. And uh, <clears throat> this is a steel specimen for tensile test and after testing the uh, shape of the uh, uh, specimen maybe look like may look like this so uh, based on tensile test we will uh, we can um, plot the stress strain relationship of the material right and <clears throat> stress strain curve as a result of uh, tensile test can be so like this so this is stress strain curve for maybe for steel okay for steel so there are um, maybe uh, three main parts. The first part is this part, linear part. And this point is called yielding point. Okay, yielding point. And we have this part is ductility and it is hardening behavior of the material. So now we, um, if we just consider this part, linear part, then we have linear behavior of the material, stress strain. Then this is the tangent modulus of this um, angle is elastic modulus, right? And in this case, if we just only use the linear behavior, then we have elastic analysis. So when you are, when you were um, undergraduate student, and all of the uh, mechanic problems, you use elastic analysis, right? Because uh, the assumption of material is elastic behavior. <coughs> However, if we use the whole behavior of the material, then we have plastic analysis. So plastic analysis includes linear and nonlinear behavior of the material. Okay, so now you understand plastic analysis beyond the nonlinear behavior of the material, or in another word, is inelastic behavior of the material. Second thing is, uh, the third thing is uh, ductility uh, of the material. So, um, at, uh, we already mentioned this, the first uh, phase is linear relationship between stress and strain. And after any point, the material, the, the, the curve, so the increments 
of the strain without any uh, uh, significant increment of stress. So in this part, we call the ductility of the material. So this material is ductile material, okay? And this behavior is called ductile behavior. So ductility is important for plastic analysis and design. The left hand side finger here show the brittle behavior of the material. So let's say there is no uh, ductility behavior. So in stress strain curve, it is linear and then uh, a very short nonlinear and then failure. So in this case, we call brittle um, behavior. So please note that in brittle behavior or brittle material, we don't have a plastic analysis. We cannot, okay? So only the time material, then we can do plastic analysis. So again, ductility of the material is important. We can only do the plastic analysis with the time material the type of behavior okay um so it seems that uh, plastic analysis got uh, um, or, uh, can only cut it out for only uh, the time material like uh, steel or um, some uh, metal material However, uh, it, so how, how do you think about, about the um, concrete? When, uh, when can we do the plastic analysis with concrete? How do you think about that? So as you know, in confinement concrete, in confined concrete, the stress-strain relationship maybe look like this, right? So in confined concrete. So in confined concrete, there are a ductility part of the material like this. Then sometimes it means sometimes we can do the uh, uh, plastic analysis with the concrete, confined concrete. So think about that. I will uh, give you uh, homework regarding this. Uh, concept okay think about what what type of structure concrete structure or reinforced concrete structure we can use plastic analysis okay and the idealized curve <clears throat> this is real relationship between stress and strain of the ductile material. Right? It's a real curve. However, in the um, practical analysis, in the practical analysis and design, we cannot use the real curve like this. It is, uh, it is not very convenient for, uh, for practical um, analysis and design okay it's not easy so how to um, to do the analysis and design so uh, for the last purple i mean for practical purpose analysis a uh, purple, uh, purple practical analysis of design purpose the idealized curve will be used Okay, the idealized curves will be used. It is elastic, perfectly elastic stress strain curve. So here is idealized curve. So um, again, this is real curve. But in the practical analysis and design, we use idealized curve like this. It is idealized curve, okay? So in an idealized curve, 
it is called elastic and perfectly plastic stretch strain curve again it is elastic okay and it is yielding point and it is fully plastic or perfectly plastic okay and in this part we have uh, elastic modular at the tangent of this angle so from now on in the plastic analysis and design we only used the idealized curve like this okay so in idealized curve, idealized curve we just consider the uh, ending point or ending stress and ending strain here okay epsilon y epsilon y <clears throat> And if we have um, sigma y and sigma epsilon epsilon y, then we can calculate the tangent modulus or elastic modulus. And this part is elastic. And after this point, okay, after this point, ending point, we have fully plastic. That is assumption, okay. That is assumption for plastic analysis and design. So again. I want to I want you to remember in from now on in this class or in plastic analysis and design we only used the idealized curve okay in idealized curve we just consider the the first part is linear so uh, sigma is increasing nearly up to sigma y and eating point or um, <clears throat> okay in eating point or in stress and after that we assume no increment of stress no increment okay but the strain is increased but stress is not increased so in this part we call fully plastic from here from this point the strat is remain but strain is increased okay strat is remain no increment of strat anymore from this point okay so remember in plastic analysis and design we use idealized curve that is that concept is important for any uh, problems okay so uh, it means from now on we don't need to uh, uh, we don't need to um, consider the real curve but idealized curve okay idealized curve is used okay so i hope that um, you understand the behavior of the material especially for dog time material and uh, steel is one of the uh, very um, normal time material and uh, some other material metal material is uh, some metal material uh, so ductile uh, behavior then we can use plastic analysis and design for brittle material It has no um, plastic analysis for the brittle material. However, in some case, for example, in a confined structure, there will be um, ductility, and we can use uh, elastic, maybe, but uh, it, it, it is not normal. Okay, so uh, I hope that now you understand. And you can link between the uh, plastic behavior, the ductile behavior of the material to the, um, the, the technical the technique of the plastic analysis and design in the in, in the next some class. Okay. <clears throat>
Okay, so now I will uh, provide a homework, very simple homework. Uh, let me explain a little bit about this homework. Okay, very simple. Please uh, provide at least two examples of uh, concrete by structure. For example, reinforced concrete or fiber reinforced concrete or what, any type of concrete structure. Which shows uh, ductility behavior. Okay. So uh, I already mentioned that um, concrete material is um, brittle material. But in the concrete structure, sometimes it shows uh, ductility behavior. Is right. So the assignment here is please provide two examples. Okay, two example of concrete structure which show a ductility behavior of the material of this structure. Okay, so. Uh,